Now, please join me in prayer. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for a week full of blessings. Thank you for blessing the 40 days of prayer, and thank you for blessing our daily bread this morning. I pray that you may guide the rest of this service and that you may be with each one of us through the Holy Spirit, that all of us may be able to receive from you and that the word may speak to us and sanctify us because your word is the truth. I pray that you may bless every uh, people here to be a blessing uh, for many campus students, their family, their relatives, and friends. Thank you so much for bringing us here. Please be with Daniel so that he can deliver a message that is pleasing before your eyes. Thank you for your grace, and thank you for Jesus Christ who has given us his righteousness. I pray that um, we may glorify you in everything that we may do. In the name of Jesus, my Lord, I've prayed. Amen. Amen. Now we'll be reading our Bible passage on Exodus chapter 4, verses 18 through 31. I'll start reading and please follow me respectively. Verse 18 says, Then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Let me return to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. And Jethro said, Go, and I wish you well. So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and started back to Egypt. And he took the staff of God in his hand. Then say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says. Israel is my firstborn son. And at a lodging place on the way, the Lord met Moses and was about to kill him. So the Lord let him alone. At that time, she said, bridegroom of blood, referring to the circumcision. Then Moses told Aaron everything the Lord had sent him to say, and also about all the signs he had commanded him to perform. And Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people. Um, thank God for his word. Now we'll be receiving a message by Daniel Chim. Good evening. Good evening. Um, how are you? <laughs> Good, okay. So, uh, title of my message is what is the title of my message? Mm -hmm. Amen. So, my passage will cover from Exodus 4 18 to 31. Um, can we uh, read the key verse together and I'll pray? It's, a, it's a verse 25. It's over there. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's go. But Sephora took a flint knife, cut off her son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it. Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me, she said. Amen. Let me pray. Um, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, bringing us here today to hear your words. Um, um, really uh, help us to hear the words of uh, uh, Jesus Christ, who is uh, our bridegroom of blood. Uh, you are our Savior. Uh, may we come near to you. Um, and uh, may you also come near to us. 
Uh, Lord Jesus, um, as I deliver your words, have mercy upon me, uh, this sinner, uh, with the really um, use me as your mouthpiece to deliver your words, uh, full of Holy Spirit and uh, full of uh, love of Jesus Christ. Only your name be praised and glorified and help us to, uh, including me, to receive and hear, uh, receive one word of God through this uh, message and the passage. Uh, thank you for this time of prayer. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So as I said, bridegroom of blood. It sounds uh, interesting, right? Uh, a little bit... <laughs> All right, so let me go. Um, today, Israelites became slaves in a foreign land, as we all know. They groaned because the sufferings of slavery were too much. So they cried out to God. When God came down to Moses in a burning bush, God said to him, what did God say? Sorry, Mission John wanted me to be very interactive, but I'll just read <laughs> Huh? Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Shepherd Robert, what did the Jesus? What did the God say? I have seen the suffering of my people. That's right. That's that's why right. he said, "I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave driver, and I am concerned about their suffering." God heard the prayer of the Israelites, although sometimes we feel like God is not listening to our prayer. But as we can see here, God indeed hears our prayer. And God says he is concerned about their suffering. May we continue to pray and cry out to God. So God commanded Moses in 3.10. What did he say? 3.10. He said, so now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, Israelites, out of Egypt. God chose Moses to go and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. However, he did not seem to be ready on his own eyes. How he asked God, who am I? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring my people, Israelites, out of Egypt? Actually, Moses was right, isn't he? Who was he? Who am I? He was just a shepherd in a foreign land, slow in speech. But God is telling him that I will be with you. That What is he saying? That God will be with him. I will be with you. This God who says, I am who I am, uh, this makes a, quite a contrast from who am I. But this is actually a great discovery. Moses at this point was nothing. He did not have eloquent speech. He did not know what to do in front of a very proud king of Egypt. But God reveals him that he is, what is he? <laughs> I'm sorry, for speaking on you. He says, what is God says? He's, he's, I am, I am, who I am. He's telling Moses that he is the almighty God the creator of heavens and the earth, and will be with Moses. So Moses did not have to be afraid. So today, so today in chapter 418, Moses makes a decision of faith to go to Egypt as God commanded him. God had told Moses, all those who wanted to kill you are dead. So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and started back to Egypt. And he took the staff of God in his hand. Moses was a great man of faith. Don't you think so? He knew the purpose of going to Egypt. He knew the only thing that he can depend on was God. So he took the staff of God in his hand. He absolutely had nothing to fight against the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh. Pharaoh was self-proclaimed God. He had hundreds and thousands of armies and chariots. How can you fight against someone like him? Can you? Uh, in his younger years, Moses thought he had something. 
He thought with his own strength he could achieve something. That's, that is why he killed the Egyptians and wanted to separate the two Israelites like slaves fighting. But this time, as he was going back to Egypt, Moses was not trying to fight a battle of flesh and blood. He was no longer taking it into his own hand. He rather showed his complete reliance on God by carrying staff of God with him. Also, Moses well knew that he was basically going for a war and battle against the king of Pharaoh. But interestingly, Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and started back to Egypt. He, he was not like telling his wife and children to stay, stay in the Midian while he goes for a great battle. <laughs> Moses did not ask for a great army of hundreds and thousands. He did not ask for an imposing chariot with the four strong horses. At least uh, Gideon in the Bible had 300 armies, right? But Moses had none. Um, rather, he took his wife and sons on a donkey and was heading back to Egypt. This shows me Moses' complete reliance on God. Moreover, this reminds me of our Lord Jesus Christ, who entered Jerusalem meekly and humbly riding on a donkey to be our victorious king and become our savior from the power of sin and death. What about us? Are we completely relying on God as Moses did? Or are we still relying on our own power, strength, and ability? Are we, what are we relying on? Elijah? <laughs> mm, I mean, thank you. Yeah, we should rely on God, right? When we rely on God and walk forward by faith on a donkey, fully trusting in God alone, then surely God will help us and grant us victory in Him. <clears throat> then, uh, next, the Lord God began to give Moses instructions again. He told Moses to perform all the wonders of God when Moses uh, gets to Pharaoh. But he foretold Moses beforehand that although Pharaoh will see all these wonders of God, God will harden his heart, that he will not let the Israelites go. We can see that hardened heart is a path to destruction. Additionally, God said, Israel is my firstborn son. Since Pharaoh did not listen to God's word to let my son go and worship me, God would, God would kill the firstborn son of Pharaoh and all the Egyptians. All these words were fulfilled in chapter 12 when all the firstborn of Pharaoh and Egypt died, while all Israelites who put the lamb's blood on the door frame were saved. Can we, can we read the verse uh, 24 together? Let's go. Uh, let, let's go. At a lodging place on the way, the Lord met Moses and was about to kill him. <clears throat> so, on their way to Egypt, on a donkey, thankfully, there was a lodging place. Right? <laughs> so it seems that Moses and all the family members was taking a good rest there. Then the Bible says, then the Bible says, the Lord met Moses and was about to kill him. What do you think this means? Mission of Peace, what do you think this means? Why? <laughs> it was God who told him to go, right? Then why did he try to kill him? Yeah. yeah, maybe that's what I thought too. So, yeah. So, wasn't it the Lord God who told Moses to, to go to Egypt? Right? Then, why suddenly the Lord was trying to kill Moses? Is God's mind fickle and constantly changing? 
but Zipporah somehow understood the situation. She took a flint knife. Zipporah was the wife of Moses. Yeah. Uh, she took a flint knife, cut off her son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it. Then she said, let me see. Oh, oh okay, let me, can we read this key verse together? Okay, let's go. But Zipporah took a flint knife, cut off her son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it. Surely you are a brother to me, she said. So the Lord let him alone. At that time, she said, bridegroom of blood, referring to circumcision. So then why suddenly the Lord was trying to kill Moses? Uh, <clears throat> so Zipporah somehow understood the situation. She took a flint knife, cut off her son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it. Then she said, Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me. So the Lord let him alone. That's what the Bible says up to this point. So the Lord, God, passed over Moses. This time it was not the Passover through the lamb's blood, but it was rather through the cutting off the foreskin of his son. And somehow through the wife Zipporah's word, Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me. Where do we see the first circumcision in the Bible? Do you know? Abraham. That's right. That's right. What chapter? <laughs> that's right. Very close. Genesis 17. Uh, so uh, maybe... Uh, Hore? You want to read it? Yeah. Thank you, right? <clears throat> yes. So this is uh, before Isaac came. So God made the first covenant with Abraham in the circumcision. So God said to Abraham that you must keep my covenant. This was God's law. Every male among them was supposed to be circumcised. Any uncircumcised male will be cut off from his people. So in terms of circumcision, I think Moses did not follow God's law. We can see that one of his sons at least was not circumcised. So even though Moses was chosen by God, he had to follow all the laws of God. Otherwise, he will be cut off. As you all know, it was the law of God. As Leviticus 12.3 says, And on the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Um, this was God's law that every Israelite had to follow. Yet Moses, as a leader and as, as a prophet, he did not follow the law. He lived in the Midian for 40 years. Probably he skipped many Jewish law. So busy with his own life and survival. But now was the time to re redirect himself to God in every area of life. <clears throat> so there were a few references relating to the, the word foreskin in the Bible. These are some of the examples of word foreskin appearing in the Bible. So uh, that's what I, let me see. Mishini, uh, Elijah, <laughs> can you read uh, these verses? The Chitrani and the Chitrani. Jeremiah too.
Mm. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> the act of removing uh, foreskin is a circumcision. What would removing the foreskin mean? First thing that came to my mind was sin. Sins are our foreskin. An act of removing foreskin is our repentance before God. Actively cutting sins from our heart and our life is the circumcision. As we read, Jeremiah 4.4 4 says, Remove the foreskin of your hearts. <clears throat> uh, it, it further says, Lest my wrath go forth like a fire and burn with none to quench it. Uh, it reminded me of the Sunday passage. The sins, the green and dry trees, the southland, the unnecessary lands, only God's consuming fire can completely burn them up, letting it be clean. So, of course, God wanted Moses to completely obey his laws of circumcision and at the same time remove the foreskins of his heart and ready to serve the Lord God and his mission. <clears throat> what kind of foreskin did Moses have to remove? What do you think? Missionary Paul? <laughs> what, what, did, what foreskin did Moses have to remove? Oh yeah, Shepherd William, Pastor William. Disobedience. Yeah, that could be right. We, in what ways? Or. His ideas of. Not, not trying, not, not going, not trying to go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? That, yeah. Yeah. You're, uh, William, you're right. I, also, I hear, I, first thing I said was his unbelief. God said, to, said he will go with him and enable him to speak. But Moses was kept doubting. Second one, his was his probably his lifestyle. He probably was deeply influenced by the sedentary lifestyle of the Midianites, just daily surviving and not completely following God. Whatever the remainders of the old life, God wanted Moses to actively cut off as his wife Zipporah cut off the foreskins of his son. Only when Moses actively cut off his foreskin of the old ways, can he serve God with all his heart? Also, as Deuteronomy and Jeremiah says, circumcision means to give our heart to God 100%. Our hearts can be divided due to worries of life, worldly fame, worldly gains, and pleasure. But God tells us, circumcise the foreskin of your heart. Only when we give our heart fully to God, we can serve God. Uh, in our heart, is our heart fully circumcised by God? Or are we still having the foreskin of our heart? Is our heart divided for worldly gains, such as money, or geared to my job, my boss? Is it divided to my spouse, or boyfriend, girlfriend? Is it our children, or stable life on this earth? These are all good things. And many are blessings from God, but God wants our hearts to be circumcised to him, removing the foreskins of our hearts. So while Zipporah, Moses' Moses' wife, was cutting off his son's foreskin and touching Moses' feet, what did she say? Do you remember? That's right. All right, thank you. Yes. She said, surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me. What does she mean by that? What, what was she saying by surely you are a blood, bridegroom of blood to me? So I searched the bridegroom of blood. 
There was no bridegroom blood found in the Bible <laughs> other than this, this passage. <clears throat> But um, regarding the of blood, there are many. So, so um, uh, Mission of Peace, can you read the, these three verses for me? Thank you. <clears throat> In Matthew, Jesus refers to the drink as the blood of the covenant. Through his blood shed on the cross, there was no more requirement of circumcision or foreskin. Jesus is telling us clearly that his blood was a new covenant in Jesus Christ. We are no longer protected from God's wrath because of the act of removing foreskins. We are no longer at the mercy of God like Moses because of our sins and iniquities. We no longer have to fear God because of all our sins and shortcomings. Israelites had to be circumcised on the eighth day. Everyone. They had to offer sacrifice every year over and over again because of their sins. Without the circumcision, they did not fulfill God's requirement and they were to die. Aaron's son, for example, Aaron's son touched the ark of God, and they died right there. Were they worse sinners than us? At the sight of holy God, we are all worthless sinners. However, Jesus tells us that he became our new covenant through his blood. Likewise, our bridegroom of blood, Jesus can free and save us from the condemnation of all sins. So this bridegroom of blood to me, this bridegroom of blood to me symbolizes the Christ, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Uh, so I thought about what this means, bridegroom of blood to me, in a few ways. Firstly, Moses was the bridegroom of blood to Zipporah. Zipporah was a foreign woman, a Midianite. Her dad was also even a Midianite priest. She had no way to be saved. She had no way to be. Uh, she was not Israelites, a chosen people. She was a Gentile, uh, idol worshiping family. But she was saved through Moses, somewhat figuratively. Through Moses, she entered into God's salvation history. She became part of God's mission and part of Israel. In doing so, she was saved. Moses to her became like a bridegroom of blood to her. Second, Moses himself was a bride of bridegroom of blood to Israelites. Moses became a foreshadower of Jesus Christ. Moses represented Jesus. He saved the Israelites from the life of slavery. Moses brought the Israelites out from the impossible bondage of slavery. Moses led the Israelites through the Red Sea. He led them to the land of Canaan, the land flowing with milk and honey. Jesus became the bridegroom of blood, the figure of Savior to the Israelites. Third, Jesus becomes our bridegroom of blood. Circumcision was the old, was the old covenant between God and man. At that time, if the person did not obey the law, The end result was death. Uh, so let's, can we read these uh, uh, references? Sure. Shepard Terry, you want to? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Shabbat So, 
So, however, Jesus became a new covenant for us through his blood. By his blood, he shed on the cross, he set a new covenant. As Hebrew 8.13 says, the first covenant became obsolete. There is no longer need for the old covenant, which was circumcision. We need a new covenant, which is Jesus Christ himself. <clears throat> and, uh, sorry, and I have a bridegroom part. Uh, uh, Chapter Robert, <laughs> can you read the bridegroom? Oh, God. <clears throat> Thank you. So second, Moses himself was the bridegroom of blood to Israelites. Oh, did I all? Oh. Okay. Um, so by oh. as as we can see from these references, God is our bridegroom. And also, Jesus becomes our bridegroom. Jesus is our bridegroom of blood, who bought us through his blood. Through our bridegroom of, of blood, Jesus, we no longer face the condemnation of sin, which is caused by the law. But through Jesus, we are set free. As Moses was set free from God's rest, uh, when we believe and come to Jesus, who becomes our bridegroom of blood, we are set free from God's rest and completely freed from the condemnation of God. In Jesus, we have a new life. We have a freedom. No longer sin has power over us in Jesus Christ. When we hold on to Jesus Christ, our bridegroom of blood, we no longer face God's rest, but we have a new victorious life in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so now... The uh, Lord said to Aaron to go into the wilderness to meet Moses. Then Moses told Aaron all the, all the things the Lord had sent him to say and all the things the Lord had commanded him to perform. Then they brought all the elders of Israel and told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. And what was their reaction? They believed. And they were so comforted at the fact that God was concerned about them and saw their misery. They bowed down and worshipped. They kept crying out to God at their misery, but they were not sure if God was uh, even listening or seeing their miseries. But now they heard with their ears how concerned God was and how God had seen all their miseries. They were greatly comforted and they bow down to God. We also, many times, doubt God's love and if God cares at all. But the ultimate sign that God is with us is through his son, Jesus. Jesus is the Emmanuel that God is with us. God sees and concerned about our sufferings and miseries. God knows. Ultimately, God had rescued us from the greatest misery and suffering which was the power of sin and death. God saved us through Jesus from the power of sin and death. When we are in Jesus, we no longer are under the power of sin, death, and the darkness. <clears throat> the final part we talked about was uh, believing in Jesus. So, um, who else? Shepherd <laughs> Chan? Can you read the, this part for me? Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so as John 3.16 says, God so loved us that he gave us his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. When we believe in Jesus Christ, we are saved and have eternal life in him. As Moses was saved from God's wrath, when we believe in Jesus, we will be saved from God's wrath. But if we do not believe in Jesus, uh, as 3.18 says, uh, no, Mark 16, 16 says, does not believe will be condemned. Uh, we are condemned. If we, we, are God, we are at God's judgment. But when we believe in Jesus, we are truly saved and we can regain eternal life. May we believe in Jesus, who is our bridegroom of blood, and come before him. When we believe in Jesus, we will be saved. But if you do not believe in Jesus, we will be condemned. <clears throat> Thank God for saving us from the eternal condemnation. May we, condemnation. May we believe in Jesus Christ and be saved today. One word. Jesus, you are my bridegroom of blood. Amen. Uh, let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for uh, enabling uh, us to come before you and enabling me as a, uh, uh, your mouthpiece, a messenger today. Lord Father, uh, uh, we really wanted to hear your words. Uh, thank you for the uh, words of God. Uh, help us to, uh, it was uh, really the power of, uh, uh, power of Jesus who saved Moses from the death. Uh, Lord, help us to really uh, clothe on uh, Jesus uh, who is a uh, and believe in, believe in Jesus so that we may be uh, uh, saved from, the, from God's wrath and con condemnation. In Jesus, we will be saved and we, have, we will gain uh, eternal life. May we come to you, Lord Jesus, uh, and uh, may your blood cover us so we may, we may be, uh, be righteous before you, Lord God. And uh, may you really uh, uh, give us complete victory uh, in Jesus as we are uh, covered by your blood each day. Uh, Lord, thank you for also hearing our prayer. Uh, may we uh, continually pray uh, without giving up and uh, see uh, your deliverance uh, uh, and, and really feel, I mean, and, uh, know your love for us who hears and concerns about us. Thank you for this time. Uh, be with our LABF uh, continually with the full of Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, be with me at the work with the healing of left arm and the victory in the work under your uh, Jesus' protection and victory continually. Uh, thank you for this time of prayer. Uh, we pray all these things uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.